What's going on growers? It's James Prigioni coming to you live from Jersey. Today, I wanna to share with you a fruit tree everyone should be growing. And while we're at it, grab some fruit from it. Let's go. Even though the weather's changed and the cold is here, me and Tuck are still eating fresh fruit from the garden. Back in May, we started harvesting our strawberries, and now throughout the whole season, up to November, which is tomorrow, we're gonna be eating fresh fruit. It's a great feeling and a lot of fun to be able to grab fresh fruits and veggies all year long. That's why I encourage a lot of you to focus on both diversity and season extension, which leads me to the fruit we're focusing on today. It's easy to grow, incredibly reliable, and super delicious. This is the persimmon, and the latest fruiting crop in my whole food forest. This persimmon is not the typical kind that you can get in the stores, and that's one of the reasons growing your own fruit trees is so rewarding. Sometimes you can't just buy things, you gotta grow it yourself. The variety is called the Nikita's Gift. It's a hybrid, a cross between an American persimmon and an Asian persimmon. The tree grows to about 10 to 12 feet tall. It grows in zones about five to 10. It's self-fertile. And one of the things about it though, is it does need about 200 chill hours during the winter. The persimmons you see on this tree are not fully ripe yet. They're still hard and they need a couple cold days or even a nice hard frost in order for them to start completely ripening. But I did pick a few a couple days ago that I've gotten to ripen inside. And unlike the Asian persimmon like you get in stores, which you can eat when they're hard and has like an apple consistency, these you have to eat when they're super, super soft, almost jelly-like. So I've got this ripe one here. You can see even the color difference too. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut into this. I'm gonna show you what the texture is like, how it's so jelly-like. And these ones are so sweet when they're ripe. Uh, they taste like honey. Maybe that's why they call it the divine fruit. So we're gonna cut into it and I'm just gonna show you exactly what it looks like and maybe take a little taste of it while we're at it too. You can see it's even starting to split open a little bit because it's so ripe. The flavor of the persimmons are best when you allow them to fully ripen on the tree. But I saw I was gonna have such a large harvest this year, I wanted to try to break it up a little bit because when they're ripe, they really don't store that well. You can see that beautiful color in there and that jelly-like consistency, that's exactly what we want. So let's grab a little bit, taste some of that. And this stuff is so good when it's fully ripe like this. It really, it's the sweetest fruit I've ever had. It actually does taste so much like honey, but like a persimmon honey. So let me just try a little bit. Mm. So delicious, <laughs> so sweet. No astringency, and that's exactly what you want. Commonly, persimmons are broken into two categories. You have the American persimmon and the Asian persimmon. The American persimmon, like this one, is an astringent variety, so it has to be super soft like this, or it will be astringent. And if you don't know what astringency is, it's that uh, chalky feeling in your mouth that you get if you eat a fruit that's not completely ripe. Well, some fruits that aren't completely ripe, and some of you may have tried some American persimmons that were growing wild in the woods or something, and you did try to eat them before they were super soft, and it just dried your mouth out so much. That's what the astringency is. And on the other hand, you have the Asian persimmons. Those are the ones you always see in the store, the ones that you can eat when they're hard. Again, it has like that apple-like consistency, and I like both of them so much. And this, these ones tend to actually be my favorite because they're so, so sweet, especially when they're ripe like this. And I don't think they sell these in the store because again, they don't store well, they don't ship well. You gotta grow it yourself if you want this kind. The American persimmon is an astringent variety and the trees when they're growing in the wild or mostly all American persimmons, they grow to about 35 to 50 feet tall when they're in full maturity, so they get super huge. You'll notice this one behind me, it's relatively small. That's because it's a hybrid, the best of both worlds. A combination between the Asian and the uh, American. Let me bring you over to an Asian persimmon and show you a little bit of that. I have a young one planted, and then we'll talk a little bit more about this Nikita's gift. If you live in a warmer region, you can grow the Asian persimmons. These ones grow in zone seven to 10, and fortunately I'm in zone seven A, so I can grow both kinds. The Asian persimmons like hot summers, and if they're in a cooler region, then when the fruit is ripe, it can actually retain some astringency. These ones only need about 100 chill hours during the winter too, which is nice. And these trees are gonna stay a little smaller, they're only going to grow about 12, eh, maybe 15 to 20 feet tall. And they're actually higher yielding than some of your American persimmons. And if you want to maximize your yield in a smaller space, then the Asian persimmons are a great choice for that. Like I mentioned, I'm growing the Nikita's Gift variety. And this one is a hybrid between the Asian and the American. So it gives me the best of both worlds. It's the astringent variety. So it's got that super soft texture and tastes like honey when you eat it when it's actually fully ripe like this. 
but it also stays smaller like the Asian variety. This tree only gets to about 10 or 12 feet tall and it has large persimmons and has a great overall yield. So again, I get the best of both worlds. The persimmon tree is like growing in full sun, but it can tolerate partial shade, which this one gets because in the morning, the house shades some of it. But besides that, it gets a good amount of sunlight. You can grow these persimmons in a little bit of partial shade though. I think everyone should be growing persimmons because they grow in a variety of different climates. They're easy to grow. Since I've planted this thing, I've only watered it a few times, mainly when it has a large fruit set just like this, and I have a nice mulch down which helps it. There's little to no pruning that needs to be done. I only take out the disease and damaged wood. There's little to no pest or disease issues too. I think some of that's probably because of the thick skin on the fruit and the thick waxy leaves. And it's also reliable. Since I've planted this and it's reached full maturity, fruiting maturity, it's almost fruited for me every single year since that time. So the tree is easy to grow, it's reliable, and it's super delicious. What else could you want? That's why I think everyone should be growing persimmons. Before I let you go, I just wanted to give you a little clip of Tuck. He's hanging out out here with me. He wasn't involved too much in this persimmon video, but he did want a snack. We had our first hard frost last night and it killed a bunch of our green beans and some of our summer crops and late things we were growing into the season. So I'm gonna see if he wants some of these green beans. He loves the dragon tongues because this is gonna be the last ones of the season. So I know I'm gonna be savoring them. I think Tuck will probably be savoring them too making sure we make the most of this last harvest. And I'll just let the guy crunch away. Even though I had a frost last night, everything in here is doing just fantastic because not only is it cold hardy stuff, but I put my hinge tube house on just the other day. So things in here are thriving and we'll be growing these super late into the season. But my peppers didn't do so well. The frost kind of killed a lot of these, but the peppers on them are still good. So these are the Creole de Cocina, so they're still gonna be perfect to eat because the frost wasn't super bad. These are like Tuck's favorite ones too. He went from a bean, and now he wants some pepper. This guy loves it all. And also this bed over here has done well too. And I've got some hardy kales in here, a bunch of different brassicas and stuff. So it's a lot of fun to be able to eat this stuff so late into the season. That's today's video growers. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. I hope you take the time to plant some fruit trees like the persimmon tree. And when you are planting a fruit tree, take a look into the variety. Find out which ones grow best in your particular location or even the ones that you're gonna like to eat the most. In some instances, if it's not something like a persimmon tree, you may wanna grow a tree that's disease resistant and that might help you out and save you a lot of time and a lot of hassle. If you guys enjoyed the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, share it with your friends. Don't forget to check out the merch down low. And remember, whenever you're on Amazon doing some shopping, start your shopping with our Amazon affiliate link. Tuck and James will be back to you again real soon. We out.